Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on. PM Modi outlines three pillars of India's Green Growth Initiative. Pakistan to cut government expenses by 15% in austerity drive. And coronavirus care makes Indian mother house arrest self and child for three years. And now for all the details, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday addressed the post-budget webinar on green growth, the first of a series of 12 webinars organized by the government to seek ideas and suggestions for the effective implementation of initiatives announced in the Union Budget 2023. Modi outlined an increase in the production of renewable energy, reducing the use of fossil fuel and moving towards a gas-based economy in the country as the three pillars for green growth and energy transmission. The Prime Minister said India's vehicle scrapping policy is a key part of its green growth strategy for which 362 million US dollars have been allocated in the budget. Earlier this year, India also approved an incentive plan of $2.11 billion to promote green hydrogen in a bid to cut emissions and become a major exporter in the field. Friends, Bharat renewable energy resources may Jitna commanding position mein hoga, utna hi bada badlao, wo pure vishwa mein la sakta hai. Ye budget bharat ko global green energy market mein ek lead player ke rup mein sthapit karne mein bhi ahem bhoomi ka nibhayega. Is liye, mein aaj Energy world se jude har stakeholder ko bharat mein nivesh ke liye amantrit karta hu. And U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Thursday said that the United States would redouble its efforts to marshal global support to help Ukraine as finance ministers and heads of central banks from the G20 nations will meet in India on Friday. Yellen also said that G20 countries, especially China, need to work to ease the debt overhang that is putting more than half of low-income countries in debt distress. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen stepped up calls on Thursday for increased financing support to Ukraine to help it battle the year-old Russian invasion as the United States readies an additional $10 billion U.S. dollars in economic assistance in coming weeks. Yellen, speaking at a news conference in India on the eve of the first anniversary of the Russian invasion, said it was critical for the International Monetary Fund to move swiftly towards a fully financed loan program for Ukraine. Yellen is to join other finance ministers and heads of central banks from the group of 20 nations on Friday for a meeting in India's Bengaluru city, the first major meeting of India's year-long presidency of the bloc. Let me say with respect to sanctions and aid to Russia, um, we have made clear that providing material support to Russia or assist or assistance with any type of systemic sanctions evasion would be a very serious concern to us. And we will certainly continue to make clear to the Chinese uh, government and to companies and banks in their jurisdiction uh, about what the rules are regarding our sanctions and the serious consequences they would face for violating them. India has kept a neutral stance on the war seeking a diplomatic solution while declining to blame Russia for the invasion. But Yellen said she would like to see forceful condemnation of the war. She also said that G20 countries, especially China, need to work to ease the debt overhang that is putting more than half of low-income countries in debt distress, indicating towards Sri Lanka. 
While facing an acute economic crisis, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has announced a new austerity drive to cut down on government expenses. This comes as Pakistan is eyeing a staff-level agreement with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, this week. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Wednesday announced a slew of austerity measures which he claimed would save the country 200 billion rupees annually. The announcement comes as Pakistan is eyeing a staff-level agreement with the International Monetary Fund IMF this week for a crucial bailout worth $1 billion. Shahbaz said all federal ministries and government offices have been directed to reduce expenditure by 15 percent and that he had asked his ministries and advisers to forego salaries, allowances, luxury cars, foreign trips and business class travel. Inflation in January spiked to 27 percent year on year, the highest in more than a decade, with citizens lamenting that even basic essentials have become unaffordable. मैं आटा लेने के लिए क्या है एक किलो आटा लेने के लिए आया हूँ 20 किलो आटा लेके जाता हूँ इस गवर्नमेंट ने खाना खराब कर के रख दिया वाम का ये अपने केस माफ करवाने के लिए हैं वाम को इनको कोई ख्याल नहीं है हाँ जी इनको शर्म करनी चाहिए Meanwhile, opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan heaped scorn at the government over the state of economy, saying that industries have shut down and people are becoming unemployed. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves have already fallen below a three-week import cover. The government earlier this week passed the supplementary finance bill to raise more than 170 billion Pakistani rupees through taxes. And Balochistan Minister for Communication and Works, Abdul Rahman Khetran, was arrested on Wednesday for his alleged involvement in the killing of three people after their bullet-riddled bodies were found from a well near his residence in Barkhan area. The arrest came following massive protests in provincial capital Quetta to demand justice in the incident. Security forces in the region also recovered three other abducted persons who were allegedly kept in a private jail by Khetran. Reports suggest among the deceased, the post-mortem examination of a girl revealed that she was killed after being sexually assaulted. In a tweet, Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan also demanded immediate action against the law of the jungle. Local media reported Khetran has denied the allegations and termed the incident as propaganda created to tarnish his political repute. The illegal facility of a private the jail was also discovered in 2014 in when law enforcers raided the minister's property in Barkhan after he reportedly tortured police officers. And after weeks of strained relations between Islamabad and Kabul, a delegation led by Pakistan's Defence Minister Khwaja Asif met with senior Taliban officials in Afghanistan on Wednesday. In a statement, the Pakistan Foreign Ministry said matters relating to the growing threat of terrorism in the region was discussed by both the sides. Following weeks of strained relations between Islamabad and Kabul, Pakistan's Defence Minister Khwaja Asif and the head of the country's Inter-Services Intelligence Agency, ISI, Lieutenant General Nadeem Anjum held talks with Taliban authorities in Afghanistan on Wednesday over security issues. In a statement, Pakistan's Foreign Ministry said the visiting delegation met Taliban's acting Deputy Prime Minister Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, Acting Defence Minister Mohammad Yaku Mujahid, Interim Interior Minister Sirajuddin Haqqani and Interim Foreign Minister Amir Khan Mutakki. The statement added that matters relating to the growing threat of terrorism in the region, particularly by TTP and ISKP, were discussed by both sides. Office of Baradar also issued a statement and said the two sides had discussed regional connectivity and trade. It added that travellers at the Torkham border crossing, which has been closed for several days, should be well supported by the authorities and also called for release of Afghans detained in detention facilities in Pakistan. The visit comes after Pakistan's foreign minister publicly said that the use of Afghan soil by militants could pose a threat to Pakistan, a claim Taliban officials denied. A key security issue for Pakistan, Pakistani Taliban and splinter groups have renewed a series of attacks on security forces. The Pakistani Taliban or Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan pledges allegiance to the Afghan Taliban but is not directly a part of the group that now rules Afghanistan. 
Thousands of protesters gathered in Sri Lanka's capital Colombo on Wednesday to demand the government to step back from massive increase of taxes and electricity rates. The protesters were of different professions and blocked a main road outside a railway terminal and chanted slogans. Sri Lanka had raised electricity prices by 66% on 16th February in a move the government hopes will persuade the International Monetary Fund to provide a bailout for its crisis-stricken economy. The island nation had earlier also introduced new income taxes in January for professionals, ranging from 12.5% to more than 36%. The protesters warned of major strikes being planned in March if their concerns were not addressed. Here to protest against the newly established tax amendments in this country, where grave injustice has been caused to the professionals and to the working class of this country by the government. Therefore, we have suggested several alternatives to the government, and the government uh, at the moment is not considering those amendments we have forwarded. Therefore, the professionals of this country has decided to come to the streets. While well, fearing COVID-19, a woman in India's Gurugram city had locked herself along with her 11-year-old son inside their rented home for three years. The police rescued the mother and the child earlier this week after the woman's husband, whom she had shunted out, filed a complaint. Residents in India's northern Gurugram city who are living their regular lives in an arguably coronavirus-free world witnessed a shocking incident as a mother and her 11-year-old child were rescued from their apartment three years after the women set a self-imposed lockdown. Munmun Maji logged herself and her child in 2020 as she feared she would lose her son to the deadly virus. She even shut the doors on her husband after he stepped out of their house following the end of the first lockdown in 2020. The police rescued them on Tuesday after the husband filed a complaint. The wrecked Maji house was seen hoarded with piles of garbage and walls full of drawings made by her son. Maji police or unhone ek team bana ke fir CWC me as a member main bhi wahan par maujood thi. Fir usko rescue kiya bacche ko aur pehle lady ko rescue kiya fir bacche ko rescue kiya aur doctor ki doctor bhi wahan maujood the civil hospital se aur so condition bachche ki to condition theek thi psychologists and psychiatrists around the world are beginning to report signs of distress among patients worried about the consequences of the covid-19 pandemic that has claimed over 530760 lives in india as per government figures well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.